Welcome to Irresistible You Ignite Your Passion and Purpose. I'm your host, Karen Seltz. I'm here with a very special guest, Jen McAllister. I'm so excited for you guys to meet her. Jen is the leader and owner of Rise CPA and Accountants, but don't let that scare you. She's not boring, I promise. <laughs> She's also the host of the podcast, Just Figure It Out. And that is where I met her. And I was telling her immediately after we recorded a podcast where I was a guest that she was the best interviewer and she wasn't going ahead with what questions she had planned. She was so present in the moment and responding to what I said and deepening this conversation. And I'm so impressed with you, Jen. So welcome to the show. Thank you. And I'll I'll make a comment on that is when we're thinking about something we're going to say, you know, like a, a set of interview questions, then we're really not listening. We we might trick ourselves and think that we're listening to the other person, but we're not. And so yes, I, I love to have no questions. So all eyes on all eyes and ears on my guest. Yes. And it really, it really shows. And then we were also talking about our pre-show processes and it turns out they're very similar. So I would love to share it here. I've shared mine multiple times, but I would love for you to share as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, every time I, you know, five minutes before my podcast starts, I just sit down at, with the Lord and have a really heartfelt prayer that is basically, you know, please, be with me so I can ask the right questions, that I can lead the conversation in a way that is this light and has the, the right energy and the right vibe. And I also pray to be able to see the other person deeper than what I see and what I hear physically, but to really be able to see and hear them at a deeper level that you might not hear outwardly. And, and it's been a wonderful experience. It, I, yeah. it makes quite a difference. What a beautiful practice. And, you know, I've shared mine many times, but I'll share it again, that what I do before my solo episodes, especially, is I just say a prayer, like, get me out of the way and speak through me. And it really, I never know where I'm going. And I just trust, I trust my connection to God. I trust myself to be the channel and the conduit. And then I'm not nervous. So it's such a lovely practice. If any of you really want to develop a skill of speaking in public, that's what I recommend. So Jen, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you have an amazing story around being in corporate and then leaving. So I'd love for you to like, you know, tell us that or whatever you want to tell us. Yeah, absolutely. I'll set it up a little bit. Uh, I've always been an accountant and over the years, you know, I wanted to become a CPA so that I could spend more time with my family and still make the same amount of money. So this was probably about 10 years ago when I finally achieved that, that CPA. And, you know, I, I was working in a corporate position and it was me, it was just me. And over the course of five years, I was able to grow the company or grow the accounting department to 18. I picked most of those 18, not all of them. But I have, you know, I'll, I'll just be honest, it's not bragging, but it's just facts. I have a, an ability to, to uh, pick great people. And so I would pick them, nurture, develop, really patient, kind of motherly almost in this position, really just help people. So what I've always loved to do is help. And during that time, they grew very rapidly and they wanted to go public. So they started buying up additional companies. And with that, created an additional workload. And so I found myself working 10, 11, 12 hour days. And I believed that I was super valued because I was pouring my heart and soul into this position. And I just, I just knew that I was so appreciated. And I even had a legal document that said, when we sell the company, when we go public, you will get this yeah, disclosed, like, oh, but a very large sum of money. And so as I was working these hours, I thought, it's okay. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm going to use this money. I'm going to start my own company eventually. And you know, it was like, I'm, I can do this. I can do this. And then one day I got an invitation to, for a meeting, which was normal, multiple meetings each day. And 
HR was on. And I was like, oh, well, what's going on? And they said, you don't have a job anymore. Just like that. I was, I have never been more blindsided in my entire life. Absolutely nothing even compared to the, the shock. I was like, but I'm the one that holds things together. Like, you know, so they were making decisions on a piece of paper, trying to cut costs. And it was just, it was crazy. I couldn't believe it. And there were a couple of guys that were hired after me and they didn't have any additional training nor experience and they kept their jobs. And so I found myself in a position um, where I, I talked to a lawyer. So this is a Thursday. So I talked to a lawyer Thursday afternoon and I said, this is what's going on. Do I have a wrongful termination clause uh, um, case? Sorry. And they said, yes, you definitely do, but they're hard to win. And so I had, I kind of had to make this decision. I could spend my limited time. Everyone has the same amount of time each day. It's a resource. You know, you, you choose what to do with it. I could choose to focus on the legal case. I could be upset and angry every day, or I could just choose to leave it behind and move forward and create the company that I had always wanted to just not so soon it was totally unprepared. And just thinking about that for a bit, it was really clear to me that I didn't want to live in negativity. Now, sometimes it is very important to, you know, go the legal route. For me, it wasn't. I could see much more value in moving forward with this company. And so that night I went to bed and my, the wheels were turning. You know, I, I'm kind of the type to be sad for a minute, you know, cry, whatever you need to do. and then let it go. You've got to move forward, leave it behind. There's nothing you can do about it. But what you can do is the choices that you make moving forward. And so I went to bed that night. And by the time I woke up, you know, restless night, of course, I'm like, what just happened? Uh, I knew the name of my company would be Rise. And it just embodied everything that I stood for, everything that I wanted, the you know, the team that I was going to create, I wanted them to rise. I wanted our clients to rise. And I wanted to just be able to help anyone around us rise in any way that they could. And so it was just, it was great. Friday morning, I knew the name, registered it with the state and with the, the IRS, got my EIN number over the weekend, created a website, which I had never done before. And you know what? I just got to say, it kind of goes along with my podcast, just figure it out. Well, it doesn't kind of, it totally does. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, I need a, I need a website. Well, let's just figure it out. And GoDaddy was easy. And, and it, you know, so I created the website by Monday. I was in business just, you know, wow. Thursday I was let go Monday. I'm in business. I already had three of the ladies who worked with me at the other company say, I'm ready whenever you are. And so I tried to quickly get my clients so that I could bring those ladies on one at a time. And, you know, the loyalty there that were very trusting. Um, yeah. Just like Jen, I know that what you do is going to be successful. So we want to follow you. And that, that meant a lot. Wow. I love this so much. I know so many people that get caught up in that lawsuit thing and I've done my best to ask them questions about what it's doing to them you know, what's it doing to their energy, their mental state, their resources? Because like you said, it's like this spiral of negativity and people get caught in it. Mm -hmm. And I love that you were able to see it that quickly. That That's unbelievable to me. I don't know anybody that would see it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you attribute that to? Like that is something that turnaround time. Yeah, I would say you know, if I was to describe myself in a, a phrase, I would say I'm an eternal optimist. I love to be in a happy place and it's a choice and it's not always an easy one. You know, we hear all the time, like you have the choice, you have the choice to focus on positive and you, you have the choice to focus on negative. And I believe that entirely with my whole soul. And, and still I can say, it's not just that easy, but that's where I like to live. I like to live in positivity. And so that's why I was able to, you know, kind of 
get it out of my system because I don't think it's healthy to pretend like something never happened and just, you know, push those feelings and the, those emotions down. That's not healthy. Um, but after, you know, get it out, do what you need to do, get it out, but then let it go because it's not going to serve you. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it reminds me, you know, one of the modalities that I practice is rapid resolution therapy. And one of the questions that we ask clients is, is this thought useful? Would hanging on to the negative thought be useful to you? No. Would it hang on to the resentment be useful? And you're like, nope, <laughs> that does not belong in my present or my future. And I love that. You know, it was like a cosmic kick in the pants, you know, right from the universe. Like you're ready to go out on your own. Yes. And, and there were so many lessons to be learned. For example, you know, you don't want to sacrifice your own well-being, your own family time. Um, and, what you know, the, the 10, 11, 12 hours that I was talking about, you know, being loyal to something that is not loyal back to you. And I think we often, we make that mistake. We just think, well, if we are loyal, then that corporation or even that friend or whatever it may be there, it's going to be the same, but you really have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself and your family and you set limits on how much you're going to sacrifice and give to something else that in a year, in a month, in 10 years, it's not going to matter. Like you've, you've got to reestablish and reevaluate the things that are important. Yeah. And you even had it in writing, like, oh, these 10, you were justifying your 10, 12 hour <laughs> days with this thing in writing, like, oh, but here's my light and at then, the end of the oh, tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. And then they cut the legs out from underneath that offer. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's, it was like, some people will use that as an excuse to hold on to resentment and you used it as like rocket fuel. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. So what would you say, you know, to other people that are feeling like they've been victimized and maybe they have, but what would you say to them? I would say to, you know, take matters into your own hands. What, what's happened in the past, you know, being a victim, it's happened. It's the past. Now I have to do, I have to say a caveat. If you're a victim in abuse or something more serious, I'm not talking about that. Like, you, you know, you need to take care of that in different ways. But if you are a victim of a different sort, like, like my situation, um, there's, yeah, it's the past. There's nothing you can do about it. So just decide what you're going to do moving forward, learn the lessons. Um, you know, there, there aren't, in my opinion, failures in life. There really is a lot of lessons. And so that's what I did. I just, I, I learned some great lessons from the situation. Mm. And looking yeah. back, I mean, I would never be where I am right now if that didn't happen to me. So guess what? It was a great thing. Y you could say it's a terrible thing. It was, it's a great thing. Yeah. And that's another thing, you know, one of the spiritual principles that I do my best to live by. It doesn't always happen as quickly as you get it, but is everything is happening for me. And then I'll ask, you know, after I feel my feelings or maybe have my temper tantrum or whatever I'm going to mm -hmm. do is how is this happening for me? And I'm looking for that because I know yes. in the long run that I'm going to look back and go, oh, okay. All right. I see why this happened. But in yeah. the moment, sometimes I'm like kicking it, like why this happened? Like, dang it. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those hard things that happen, I mean, that's where we grow and learn. And if life was just like so easy all the time, where would that put us? I mean, it's like, you know, those, the trees, the, the ones that blow in the wind, they're the ones that have the strong roots and they last. So we can't expect to be strong people if we don't have those winds and those, those trials. Absolutely. And life would be really, really boring if we had no <laughs> contrast, you know, if everything is like sunshine and roses. Yeah. Right. It's like, it reminds me if we ever gotten the flu really badly and then you stay in bed for three days. And then when you get out of it, you're like, oh my gosh, the sun. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and I live in Phoenix. So it's sunny every day, just about. But I remember last time I got sick, it was many years ago, going outside and like spinning, like, oh, the sun on my face. <laughs> yeah, man, we take for granted those things that we just have every day. And, it, you know, until it's taken away, like yeah. our health. 
And then you get it back and you're like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. How fun. So tell us, um, where are you now with your company? How far along? How, I mean, how long have you had it? Yeah. So coming up on a two-year anniversary, which I'm really excited. Uh, sometimes it seems like it's been forever. And sometimes it's just, we're just a toddler. And it's just been really amazing at the, the steady growth and, you know, things take time, you know, so you don't want to look like grow too fast and expect too much too soon. But I'm just really, really enjoying the wonderful ladies that I work with. And I have to say, and my husband, <laughs> he he's now part of the company as well. But it's just so supportive and um, just, a, just a great place to work. Ah. I love that so much. And I love, um, you know, a lot of people go out on their own and they are comparing themselves to other people and they're wanting to grow so fast and they don't have a steady foundation. So, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs watch this show. So what would you say to people that are maybe just leaving corporate and starting their own business? Like what advice could you give to somebody who's just starting out? Yeah, for one, I think a lot of people leave corporate because so much time is required of them. So they're like, I'm tired of this. I'm going to start my own business. I can have control over my time. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that brand new entrepreneurs or, you know, not even brand new make is they work more hours or at least the same amount of too many hours that they did before. So I would say be super conscientious and put the parameters, like set the parameters and don't allow yourself to continue working into the night. You might think you have to, and occasionally you do, you know, let's be honest. Sometimes you really do, but you just got, you have to be cognizant. And I really believe in the, the 20, 80% rule. I think you need to examine the things that you're doing each day. What can you offload? What are the most important things so that you aren't working those 10 to 12 hour days? That's my advice is really just limit yourself and be cognizant. Yeah, that's so such good advice. I know my business coach says, figure out how much you want to make in a year and how many hours a week you want to work and then do the math and figure out how much your time is worth per hour. So maybe it's like $300 an hour and then don't do any tasks that are below that. So if you have admin tasks, would you pay an admin $300 an hour to do those? Probably mm -hmm. not. So you should not do them. So it's really learning to think like a CEO rather than an employee. And then a lot of people think, you know, just because they're busy, that they're productive. So like mm -hmm. you were saying, like, you know, what are you doing? And as an entrepreneur, I think you need to do things that move the needle in your business. Yes. And I say this to any client that comes to me for accounting. I see that, I mean, Sometimes you'll see things as an expense, like, oh, I can't afford that as a new business owner. I see accounting and other things as an investment, because when you invest in someone to take care of different parts of your business that you don't want to do and you're not good at, then it allows you to spend your $300 an hour time actually, you know, growing the business and doing what you were meant to do. So yes, definitely. I mean, you can't offload everything, but really, you know pick those things that you know you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> For me, that's tech. Like anything tech, I'm like, nope. I get so frustrated and I'm like, this is so dumb. Like I just spent like three hours doing something that a VA could have done in five minutes. Yes. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear you. I'm with you. Um, I, I had to be a substitute tech person just yesterday. You know, someone didn't show up to our weekly business meeting and I was and I'm the president. So I was like, oh no, I don't know how to do this. And then I thought, Jen, think about the name of your podcast, just figure it out. <laughs> and so I'm like talking to myself, I'm like, okay, like this is what needs to happen. We have to have a slideshow. And then just like, calm down, Jen. And how are you going to figure it out instead of, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, you just, you just have to have that mindset of yeah. do this. And I mean, sometimes like we were talking about, you don't have to, so offload it, but other times you just have to figure it out. I love that so much. And it's that knowing that you can figure it out, like 
of course you could figure it out. You're a brilliant woman. Like, <laughs> and that's the thing is like, we, I think many of us have this learned helplessness. We, we, yes. We're so used to like, I don't know how to do this. So I'm just going to ask someone else to do it rather than taking a few minutes to figure it out. Because sometimes for me, there's like great joy in those things. Like, oh my gosh, I figured this thing out by myself. And I feel very proud of myself. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And you just, you know, and I do that same thing. I'm like, you know, here, show me how to use the remote. I mean, that's an extreme example, (laughs) but it's like, okay. So if that somebody wasn't there, you're like, okay, so what would I do? And then, yeah, it's a mindset change with anything. Um, when you just know, okay, like, I'm just going to figure this out. Then it, you know, you just relax and your, your mind relaxes and you're, you're able to like, okay, this is the next step. And I think that's really applicable to anything, business, life, just anything in general. Definitely. And and another thing I think that really supports in that is just letting go of it being perfect or being a certain way and just allowing it to be messy. Like Mm -hmm. done is better than perfect. And it gives us so much more freedom and access to our creativity and our logic and our humor. Because if you're like so tight and rigid and like, oh gosh, it's got to get done. And you know, we make it important. Anything we make important, the subconscious mind reads as potentially dangerous. If we don't figure this out, we could die. It's like, yeah. well, it's not, if the slides don't go perfectly well, no one's going to die. Like, you know, it's, <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not that important, really. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so I, I don't know. For me, I just like to have fun with things too. Yeah. And you know, um, with the podcast, Well, a couple of things. One of the, one of the sayings that I like so much is you don't have to um, be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And Mm -hmm. that's what I, I embraced with the podcast. Um, I just, I just started, I mean, I didn't just start out of the blue, but you you kind of postpone things that are fearful, like, oh, maybe next year I'll do that. And maybe, you know, whatever it is. And I was just like, I'm going to start on January 1st, no matter how ugly my background is, which it didn't look like this in the beginning. Um, And I, you just, you just have to start. And the other thing, you know, reflecting back because, well, let me me kind of set this up a little bit is you don't always know what you're going to learn in life. And when you just open to, um, things that you're you're not so just narrow-minded and you're open to opportunities, then you're able to embrace some opportunities and being uncomfortable and and then looking back and seeing where the growth has come. And, you know, with that, I, I didn't listen to other people's podcasts in preparation. I didn't say, I like this one. I don't like this one. This is what I should do. And I didn't, I didn't even think about it. And then after a few months, I thought that was such a great thing for me personally, because then it brought the authenticity and it just, it brought, this is what I want to talk about. This is how I want to talk about it. And there was zero comparison. And that was a reflection moment where I thought that was awesome. I wasn't trying to be like anybody else. That's brilliant. And Again, it's just that testament of you following your inner compass and your inner guidance. And I, gosh, I wish that's the thing, the skill that I believe most people would really benefit from. Because if you look at it, you know, this comparison, we say, like, I come from 12 step, but we say comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. And it is one of the biggest tactics the ego will use to get us to feel separate, whether we feel like we're better than somebody else or worse than somebody else, like it doesn't matter. It's still feeling separate or different than them. Yes. Where, and yeah, yeah I, I, I love that. I mean, I really like to, as, as much as possible, whenever it can come up in conversation is there is just one you, you know, everyone is so unique. You definitely don't need to compare yourself to anyone else. If there are 1000 other ice cream shops, that's fine because nobody, you know, either no one makes the ice cream the way that you do, or no one makes their customers feel the way you do or whatever it is. Like there's always room for uniqueness. Mm, Definitely. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love it so much. So what else would you say, like, what were your pivotal moments do you think that shaped you 
into being like that quick to see the truth to see the truth in like like what i mean by that is like you know if you spent your time doing the going down the lawsuit route i'm going back okay. to the beginning yeah yeah you know and then you saw like no that's not where i want to focus my time this is what i'm going to go this way yeah i would say definitely feelings and being real with yourself and am i feeling negative grumpy mad and is this fun? Is this a, a fun place to be? No. Okay. Then what am I going to do to get out of this and be in a, in a happy, positive, um, you know, vibe. And so it's really that, like, I don't, you know, where do you want to be? Where do you not want to be? And, you know, we have selective attention and we get a select if we want to pay attention to the negative things, or if we want to pay attention to the positive things. And, you know, as an example, I, I know this individual, there's many like this person. And I just thought, why, why are dramatic things happening to her all the time? Like, oh my goodness, she has such a dramatic life. And then it hit me one day that unbeknownst, I mean, people subconsciously do these things. They don't even know it, but subconsciously she was seeking after drama because that's some kind of comfort. Like, like if something dramatic's not happening, then I don't know how to, to deal with my life, you know? And again, it's, we, we do that so subconsciously uh, that unless we step back, get real with ourselves and realize we can change the way that our life looks to us. Cause it's all, it's all up here and how we choose to, um, where we choose to focus our time and how we choose to reframe and frame what's going on. Beautiful. Yeah. And I love you were just talking about your emotions that you use them as for guidance and, you know, checking in with them. I keep like keep talking with my hands and hitting the microphone, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, using your emotions as the indicator, like, okay, how does this feel? And do I want this? And then having the wherewithal to actually stop it, stop the cycle before it's like that big snowball at the top of the hill rolling down and getting gaining speed and mass and all the things. And then you can't stop it. Once you get in that loop of the thoughts yes. that creating the feelings, it's really hard to stop it. So I love that you check in with yourself and you're very real. Do you have a, like a spiritual practice or a practice like meditation or anything like that? What do you do to actually check in because so many of us are busy, busy, busy and numbing out. Yes. You know, that's such a great question because I haven't always been good at this, but I've, I've tried to do a lot better and I've, I've noticed a big difference. So for one, you know, I wake up in the morning and I'm a busy person because I choose to right? like, you know, I could choose not to be busy, but so I'm, I'm busy and I feel like I have to get up and just go, go, go. And so I would say, well, let, let me get some work done first. And then maybe later I can, you know, you know, read, read the scriptures, pray. Um, but then I was like, you know what, what I can set that. So I will, um, be ready for the day at seven 30. So from seven 30 to eight, and again, I'm not perfect at this, but you know, when I am, this is, this is my routine. And so knowing that nobody expects me to be online, so to speak until eight. So, um, then it just, rids the gets rid of the pressure to like oh i don't have time for this i don't have time for this so i'll pray and i'll read and i read in the same way that we were talking about prayer before um a, a podcast or a tv show and i'll i'll pray the same way like help me not to just read the words on the pages but help me to understand what kind of a message i need for myself today because yeah it's not always just the words, but it's just, it's creating that space, um, to, to have that inspiration that's so important and, and being slowing down, right? Like I'm not going to just hurry and read this page really fast. And then the last, I do three things and I'll do a, a five minute meditation. And this is a new practice to me. Um, cause I used to think like, well, what would you do? Just sit there and think of nothing. And my busy brain is like, I can't just sit and think of nothing. So, I learned more about meditation and I'll listen to something. And I mean, it's incredible. It really just sets the tone for, I would say, just, just peaceful. Like, so I'm not sitting down at my desk at eight o'clock 
um, in my own house. You know, it's funny how we kind of talk about like, I'm going to work. Well, I'm going 10 steps <laughs> to work. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, but then when I'm at work, it's not, okay, I've got to do this, 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 and this, but it's just like, okay, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do that. And it just is such a different feeling. And you just got to stop telling yourself you don't have time for things because what you're really saying is that's not important to me. And that's okay. If it's not, for example, if I were to say, I don't have time to cook a healthy meal. What I'm really saying is I don't want to cook a healthy meal. Um, and I know that kind of sounds harsh, but that's the truth because whatever you really want, you're going to make time for. And we know this because you, someone may say, oh, I don't have time to work out, but you have time to sit and watch TV for an hour. <laughs> you know, so you're you're really fooling yourself and we do that a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll just reiterate. It's not that you don't have time for something. It's just not as important to you as something else. So get real with yourself. Yes. And I love uh, the five minutes can make such a huge difference in our lives. Why not take five minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Or more if you can. It's just, I don't, I, you know, ADHD, I don't, whatever you want to call it. I I can't sit still for too long. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's really interesting. I do this practice called five minutes as Christ. And, you know, you sit and you pray at, first and then you get into the this place of for me it's really playful like if you were christ as you know all spiritual texts essentially tell us you know you will do greater miracles than i will right um what would you do and i'm like oh i'd go to all these children's hospitals i'd cure everyone and i'm like mm -hmm. so it gets you in touch with your real power as a co-creator with god and i absolutely love it and then I feel amazing, right? Like I, I just cured a bunch of people. <laughs> All these kids are going home today with their parents, you know? Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. So you asked me what I do and you've shared a little bit. What else do you do? Oh my gosh. So it depends on the day. Right now I'm doing something on Mind Valley called Silva Ultramind. It's super fun. Highly recommend it, but I do a lot of journaling, a lot of different types of meditation. Dr. Joe Dispenza, big fan. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and you, whatever your modality is, I, I think we would both agree uh, for anyone, just do something. Do yeah. something that will set the tone, align you, and put you at peace. And, yeah. and to be able to you know tap into that that power that we all are able to, it's all, it's there for all of us. We just need to tap into it and ask for it. Yes. I also want to say, I love what you said about before you read anything to pray, like that's brilliant. I don't know why I never thought of that. It's <laughs> so brilliant. And it's not, then it's not like checking a box. So I did my reading, you know, it's like really absorbing it and getting it in your body. I yeah. love that. Yeah. You know, it, it's kind of like I'm drawing this correlation. Um, let's see how well it, it goes. But, you know, we talk about like medical doctors and then there's so much more. Like I'd say medical is is one D, but it's three D. You know, you've got your your mind and your soul and your physical body. And so, you know, for we're, we're looking at the physical body only, we're missing. We're, we're just seeing what's there in front of our eyes. Same thing with reading. So if you're just reading the words, this may be just one dimensional, but then if you're mm. asking to, um, I don't know, feel it in, in your, you know, let's say like personal inspiration, as well as in your heart, then you're really getting the 3d experience that, that we're, that we all should have. Or maybe even 5d. Let, mm. Let's amp it up. Yes. I'm big into quantum physics. And so I'm not going to go into that nerdy because <laughs> we're, we're running out of time here. <laughs> but absolutely. More than but one. Yes. Can agree. <laughs> For sure. Oh, I love it so much. So I'm going to put it in the show notes, but if some people don't like to read it, where can people find you? Yes. You can visit me at riseaccountingllc.com. You can also find my podcast on Spotify and Apple and it's just figure it out 
I think you can spell it normal, but also it's the dollar sign in the S, J-U dollar sign T for just. And I don't, I have a, an investment company called TJ9 Investments. You can also find me there. And personally, you know, well, I have to say it, it'd be so much easier if it was just, so some people just say like, oh, I'm Jen McAllister. You can find that very name anywhere you go. But unfortunately I'm <laughs> Jennifer Miles McAllister on Facebook <laughs> and I'm Jen McAllister on Instagram. So uh, one place will lead you to another. So if you remember any of those five or so <laughs> methods, then you'll find me. Beautiful. I love that so much. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share or that you wish I would have asked you? Ooh, that's a good question. I think, um, just overall, I just like people to know and understand that you're so much more capable of what you currently give yourself credit for that. If you, if you really want something really sit with that and, what is your why behind wanting that? And then dig deeper, you know, the why behind the why. And because sometimes we just stop at the surface level, like, you know, I want to run a marathon. Why? Oh, well, I don't know. So really get real with yourself. And when you can have a, a really definite, clear why, then whatever it is that you want, you're going to stick with it. And that's what I would tell people is don't limit yourself. You are capable of so much more than you realize. Ah, yes. Yes. Go out there and do it. I love it. We call it in coaching, the why that makes you cry. Oh, I love that. So you dig, like you dig until you hit it. And, you know, when we're talking to people about what they want, we keep asking them, and why is that important to you? And why is that important to you? Until they hit something that is like their deeply personal why. And it does like there's tears that, that happen or goosebumps, like one of the two yeah. or both. I love that. And I'm wondering if you and I have maybe talked about this on my podcast, but let me just, I mean, let me add to that, you know, for example, you know, a guy wants to, you know, make a lot of money. Why? Oh, so I can take care of my family, right? Some kind of out of the box answer. Okay. Well, why do you want to take care of your family? Well, I love them. Okay. I want to spend time with them. And why do you want to spend time with them? Like some, sometimes it's just these out of the box answers that you don't really think deep as deep as you should. Why do you want to spend time? Well, I want to have a relationship. Why do you want to have a relationship? And you know, you can see where this is going. And sometimes when you really get down to it, you're like, oh, maybe it really isn't the making money part that's going to help me get to my ultimate, ultimate why. And you can kind of reevaluate things or it is what it is. And you just are like really clear with why you're working so hard at whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And then in the moments when it gets hard, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you can remember that I'm doing it for this reason. And then it gives you that extra boost of energy or that push that you really need to get over the hump. Because yeah. it's, it's you're, I'm sure you found this, that it can feel really difficult right before you like, you know, get over the hump and then things become easier, at least for a while. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, you know, like I always put family first. So if they're calling me and my, my kids are young adults, so they're, you know, I don't take care of them so much anymore, but I've always told myself, if they want to spend time with me, if they're calling me, if anything, they're going to be number one. They're never going to be the second priority. They're always going to be number one. So again, with any of the, the goals that you're seeking, and if you're trying to make the money to spend time with the family, um, you got to be able to see the forest through the trees. Don't be ignoring your family as you're <laughs> working toward that goal. <laughs> Yes, that's a very good reminder. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Jen. This was great. I love being on this side of the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. thank you. That was really a great conversation. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for watching Irresistible You Ignite Your Passion and Purpose. I'll see you right here next week. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> see ya.